Welcome everyone this morning to another beautiful, wonderful live broadcast. My name is Isaac Phillips Akintola. By the grace of God this morning, we want to continue to pray and seek the heart of the Lord and track his mind for another day that he has provided for us. He has given us the opportunity to see. Thank you so much, my sisters, for connecting this morning. Nice to see you guys this morning. I hope you guys have had a wonderful night rest. Well, by the grace of God this morning, we're going to look into some very important uh, uh, um, directions and uh, I believe directives also that the Spirit of God has dropped in my spirit and I quickly want us to do that. Uh, there's still so much that needs to be unpacked as the Spirit of God continues to highlight the matching order of this brand new day. I want to draw your attention to a few scriptures this morning, but before we go into that, let's just once again connect together to you know in prayer to the to the spirit of god and ask him to guide us and lead us this morning even as we begin this wonderful day he is giving unto us indeed this is a beautiful day that god has given to us and we have every reason to rejoice and be glad in it father we appreciate you once again we celebrate your good your, your goodness and your glory your mercy and your tender love that i knew every morning thank you father for once again giving us your your life your breath thank you for breathing on us thank you for awakening yes your spirit in us again to lead us without your spirit we are nothing we are but an empty shell so we thank you this morning once again that as you breathe on us this morning we are awakened unto your voice help us to rise up oh god in walking towards the directions of your counsel for this brand new day we thank you that you will continue to speak in such a way that we will hear and we will respond swiftly and quickly oh god without holding back without drawing back without distraction lord as you continue to reveal yourself and show your desire and counsel for this brand new day i want to thank you lord that we can hear and we can journey with you in jesus name amen Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Brother Mervyn, for connecting. Uh, I, I want to share a vision with us this morning. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, uh, also just, you know, bring some few scriptures to give us context to what the Lord, amen, is, is saying and, of course, doing in our day. We are in the midst of a powerful move of God. And uh, I want to believe that we will continue to keep our hearts and our mind abreast to where the Spirit of the Lord is. Is leading us but not just to where he's leading us but to the protocols amen of his leading all right that there, there are things we have to if you will put into perspective and allow the spirit of god amen to guide us into so that we are not we are not led astray and we're not distracted from what the lord amen is is proclaiming and declaring in this new day uh early, early this hour just before i woke up this morning the lord gave me a you know a dream that is such a powerful you know a, a prophetic a, a direction in regards to the you know to the to the days that we live in and i and i believe that as one allow you know oneself to 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 walk in the spirit of what god is doing of course we know that god speaks through dreams through vision amen through of course through his word his word is his primary you know way of speaking to us he speaks to us through his spirit but he also speaks to us through dreams and vision and all of that i'm not one i mean for those who know me as a prophet i'm not one that you know is frequent in in vision and 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 and, and dreams but i'm one that god always speak to in terms of revelation the revelation of his word is one major area that heaven has been able to grace me so i can open the word of god and just begin to hear god's you know heart and mind and and bring that into context in, in regards to what he's doing in our day in our time that is a grace the father has given to me so every prophet must know where the lord amen has focused their you know sense of strength so but once a while god gives me vision here and there all right when i was growing up as a young prophet i you know, I, I had this, uh, you know, wonderful experience of, you know, having frequent dreams and, you know, vision. And I didn't really understand all what that meant until I began to grow and develop and realize how to begin to understand and interpret dreams. Because what would be the good use of having dreams and vision and you you have, you have don't have the spirit to understand or to interpret what the Lord is saying. So it's important that while people are searching and seeking for, you know, the gift of dreams and vision and, you know, all of that, that they first seek for 
amen, the ministry of the word to have a dwelling in their heart because whatever God speaks to us, amen, will require that we have his word as base, amen, to, to understand and to interpret because God will speak to us in dreams, amen, of most time, you know, through uh, 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 symbols, all right? God will use people, things, you will see faces, you will you be in places. And if, if you cannot connect, you see, Joseph in his journey with God, all right, uh, understood how God speaks and how to interpret the voice of God. And you see how that, amen, helped him to, to function in his in his prophetic assignment or else Joseph would have just missed it in the palace of Pharaoh would have missed it in the prison all right so we see the power of of, of dream amen but we also see the power amen of interpretation but that's not where I'm going this morning I want to draw our attention all right to some very key important things that speaks into our movement in the things of God we are people of the spirit we live by the spirit amen we walk in the spirit and we function amen via the spirit it is important that i re-emphasize this aspect again that we do not get to the point where we drop our guard where we drop amen our spiritual standard we don't want to get to that point all right we don't want to get to the point where we become familiar with the things of god and 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 all of the things god is saying all right man have the tendency all right to to you know to to drop the standard to drop amen the 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 the, 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 the speakings of god and the quality of the demand of god for a season particularly when a season amen is is protected is is elongated all right there's that you know idea to just all right i've heard it okay i'm, I'm so used to it and we forget amen what god is trying to you know establish or what god is doing within the context of that season all right knowing how to keep ourselves, amen at breast with god as what, what god is doing in the season is very important knowing how to keep yourself motivated amen are, are pursuing coming back to the same well and drinking again and again without getting tired and without getting to the point where you take the things of god amen for granted i i i think is a crucial thing so uh, laying this uh, uh, understanding will allow us also to have a better concept of how to you know uh, uh, position ourselves in the place of prayer remember we have said that prayer is not just some verbal thing that we do there's so much to to the ministry of prayer that we are still unpacking that we are still understanding all right in fact i believe that till jesus come we'll never be able to fully nobody will be able to say all right they 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 they, they, they have a full understanding of of prayer because prayer amen, is a place of spiritual growth is a place where we develop in revelation is a place where we get to understand the ways and the will of god for our life so we can't wake up one morning and think oh we we've we've learned everything that we need to learn no it, it it's a it, i mean nobody stopped growing we are all grown. We get to a certain point, all right. We we, we must start, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, going down. You, you, we start dying. But in the place of prayer, we don't die. Amen. We continue to live until we are translated. That's the power of prayer. All right. When we get to that peak, all right, we don't we don't come back down. We get to be translated. All right. So so I, I'm just giving us this perspective this morning and and going to draw your heart to two, 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 one or two scriptures the Lord dropped in my heart this morning. Let's look at the first scripture, 1 Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse uh, 18, but let's start from verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, all right, we'll, we'll pick it from verse 17 and we'll look at verse uh, uh, 18. Thank you, Father. It says, for our, our, our light and momentary affliction or tribulation, is producing for us an eternal glory that is far, amen, that is far beyond comprehension. I made the statement, I think, a, a few days ago. I said, I said that, that there is, that is, that is this working of God in our life, all right, that many, most time we, we don't understand that the pain, the, the, the need, the agony, the, the challenges that we are faced with, all right, plays a key role, plays a prophetic role, amen, in, in God's overall, you know, a, a 
plan for the earth, for, for the redemption of the earth. All right? Certain things the Lord will have us go through. Certain things God will bring across our path deliberately. All right? As part of the workings of his prophetic program. Amen? Which, of course, is always bigger than our own little fixative idea. Amen? Of what we want to get or what we want to receive or benefit. All right? Because most time when God is using us or when we are seeking God to use us, we are very narrow-minded regarding what God, amen, should do in our life. All right? We, we, we want to be used of God, but we want to select how we want to be used. It's not possible. That's not possible. That's not the way God God works all right in, in in the dealings of god when you study scripture you will see how god it may use men like paul and the rest of them but you look at their life what they went through i mean it contradicts the expectation the ideology all right of what men today call christianity and this is the reason why we have to come out of that idea of what men call Christianity that says well we are not called to suffer no Jesus did it all he suffered it all no the reality on ground is that we are suffering we are going through tribulation we will go through tribulation alright it says those who endure to the end shall be given those who endure to the end there are things we've got to endure there are people we need to endure there are circumstances we need to endure but we cannot endure those things if we don't know if we don't understand if we have not received what is what is called amen the view lens of god the view lens of heaven if our idea amen of life and christianity and all of this thing amen is focused on all right if it's god is good if it's bad is the devil if that is what defines our philosophy then we are going to find ourselves living Amen. In, in, in contradiction to what God, amen, has desired and, and, and ordained for us. So he said, for the light, for, for, for our light and temporal affliction. The key word there is temporal, but there are afflictions. All right. And those afflictions, the scripture says, they are producing, they are working for us. Amen. An eternal glory that, that is beyond comprehension, that surpasses what we can ever understand. So begin to put your mind, amen, at rest that when you go through situations, when you go through, you know, negativity, you, you face challenges, complex issues, all right, protracted challenges that just refuse to bulge, they're just there, you know, know, amen, that the Lord is working something, even through that situation. That God is building. You see, the attitude we, we, we present in our challenge, in our in our need, or in our want, in our you know limitation, the attitude we present, amen, fast track, amen, the the the, 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 the dealings of God in that situation or keeps us longer in it. So we have to develop the sense of spiritual uh, you know positivity. And I like I said some time ago, being positive is not is not an act of you know you, you know how your mind works, it's not it's not some positive thinking you know thing no no this is not something you do because you you know you 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 have elevated your soul to, to some you know to some nevada or god knows whatever they call it no <laughs> you, you being positive means that you're able to see things through the eyes the scripture says and all things work together for the good of them who love the lord and are called all things excluding nothing my fear, my pain, my disappointment, my rejection, my blessing, you know, my, 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 my want, my lack, all right, my success, my failure, all things work together for the good of them. How much of God's love do you have? You see, the, the love of God is the measuring standard and yastic, amen, of, of, of how we understand things. When you, the more you get to know and love God, the more you get to know and love God, the, me, the more you get to understand, you know, humanity. The more you get to understand life, the more you're able to address situations around you. Yes, the love of God brings us. The, you see, the love of God itself, I mean, is a curriculum we have to learn. Many people don't understand what the love of God is. We, we, we know a little about it, <laughs> and, and we define it based on our own emotion and feeling, all right? and how we, we you know, you know uh, the world system, Hollywood, and all the Bollywoods of this world, amen, and the Nollywoods have defined love to us. All right, based on what men did. All right, uh, so we, we have to, you know, have that spiritual orientation of the things of the spirit, and and that begins to speak into what I want to share with us. All right, uh, 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 because there is a there is a different world above the world that we live in. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
There is a different world, amen, a more real world, a more visible world. There are things happening in the spiritual realm. There are, there are realities taking place, all right? There are tangible things happening right now, amen, beyond that which you can see around you. So let me read on. The Bible says, amen, in, in verse 18 of the scripture, it says, so we fix our eyes, not this, not the context for our light and temporal affliction, or right, produces for us an eternal glory that is far beyond comprehension. Verse 18 says, so then, because we know that whatever we face or we have, you know, faced with in the, in the natural material world, <clears throat> in terms of pain and need and all of that, it says they are temporal. But beyond that, they are working for us. Amen. So he says, so then fix your eyes, not on what is seen. This is the key. Fix your eyes, not on what is seen. How do you do that? That can only happen, amen, via, amen, what I call spiritual education. All right? When, when you become more aware of the things of the spirit. Many people know more about the things of the spirit, but they are not aware of it. They are informed about it. They have a sense knowledge of it. And most times, you know, based on that sense knowledge, they just open their mouth, all right, and speak as one who, who have experienced the things of God only works in the position, in the reality of spiritual experience. All right, every scripture that you read that you read in the Bible must be experienced. Everything, amen, that you 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 come across, amen, in, in the Word of God must you must experience that thing in, in your spirit and of course in your. So when they talk about love, it takes contradiction, amen, for you to know if indeed you love. You cannot define love because somebody loves you and then, of course, you reciprocate back in love and say, you say, well, I have, I have love. No, 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 no. That's not how you define love. All right. You have to know and measure your love, amen, via the hatred that is thrown at you and then you throw love back. That's how you know if indeed you're growing in love or not. And that's how it goes for every other thing, amen, in the word of God. But that's not the point. That's not where I'm going. It says, fix your eyes not on what is seen. But on what is unseen, how do you fix your eyes on the unseen? This is the position now of vision. This is the place of revelation. This is the place where you live beyond, amen, your five senses. This is the place where you live beyond your, your environment, where your life is beyond the material world. That you are not captured, you are not limited, you are not, you know, based and 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 and. and clue down and clamp down on your, your your immediate world that there is a different world that you live amen that there is a reality of a life amen that you come from that is not of this elementary material elemental world system i tell you friends it's gonna take you really going through uh, the school of the spirit to come to this point where amen, you live by the realm of that which is unseen. It means the unseen is seen to you. You cannot live by something you do not see. You cannot talk about living from the dimension of the unseen. All right, if that unseen is not real to you. So the spiritual world must become more real to us. That's the key point. If we are going to advance into this new day. Remember we are advancing into new day. The new day is more of a spiritual reality. This new thing heaven is bringing us to. Hallelujah. Is going to be led and guided. Amen. By a people that are spiritual because the powers that we're going to be dealing with this the, the, the spiritual systems that we're going to be dealing with amen are, 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 are spirits that are ready amen to destroy everything that stands amen for god so you have to remember some time ago we talked about amen living through the power of resurrection yes this is the day we have to come to that point where the, what defines our life our expression of existence amen is is a dimension of true spirituality sound spirituality that our spirituality is not one that is captured amen by you know by fear by you know uh, 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 timidity all right by, by 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 you know by contradictions and you know by you know what people think or say and and how you 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 feel your emotion has been brought to a point amen of divine administration now you're living your life via the economy of the spirit hallelujah when you express emotion it's 
because amen the lord will have you express it and that emotion that you express is always connecting and submitting amen to you know to the desire of the spirit in other words your the, the soul the soul salvation amen your soul salvation has grown as matured hallelujah remember that this is the day of this of the salvation of the soul every every aspect of our soul faculty must be redeemed in this brand new day or else the soul will continue to punch amen you know that could continue to deflate hallelujah this 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 reality or realm that we are coming into we have to bring the soul under divine subjection and subjugation amen so we fix our eyes the natural eyes amen excuse me so so, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen the natural eyes but on what is seen amen the spiritual eyes the spiritual eyes sees the unseen he said for what is seen is temporal you fix your eyes on your immediate on what the report says on what somebody says on what you feel even listen to this even at the point amen of 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 death maybe you're on a sick bed and you know the world is saying okay it's over listen to this there is still so much more to live for even on a sick bed there is still so much more because there is a life hallelujah remember that death the natural death is only a transition into amen another life so we cannot say because we are in a certain situation or condition then it's over or because you find yourself in prison remember the prison was the portal amen of of joseph hallelujah to the throne we have to understand that we cannot live our life amen there or uh, what what we are faced with what is going on you have to be able to see amen the unseen and you live life from that realm you make judgment from that realm from that realm that you know they call it the unseen because they are dealing with amen humans they are speaking to humans who base their life who base their you know decisions on the scene so they say there's a different realm that is called the unseen realm you look at people and you're able to see, amen, the unseen realm around them. Hallelujah. You look at situation, you're able to understand. Like I said, not many people understand what was coming. How many, how many people in the church saw the corona coming? Among all the major prophets, very few had, you know, you know, a, 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 you know, a slightest hint that something is going to hit the earth. It's like God caught everybody on our ass. So when you live your life in the unseen realm, you, you, you live in the future. Some time ago, the Lord said to me, he said, build, people, build men of the future. To build men of the future is to raise a prophetic company. Is to raise a prophetic people, a prophetic generation. That you're, you're, before you step into you know, the, the next day, you've already, you're already there. You're just waiting amen, for natural things amen, to, to, to do their own thing. To do their own thing. You're already there. I live in the future, friends. It says, so fix your eyes. Not on what is seen, but on the unseen. Who fix, who fix their eyes on the unseen? You've got to be living in a different world amen, for you to fix. Because you see, what you, what you, what you see defines and determines what you're going to become. What you see. If you see fear, if you see failure, if you see need, if you see lack, amen, if you see sickness, poverty, if you see disease, all right, if you see, um, amen, that you will never make, you will never rise up, you will never enter into God's intention. If you are not seeing God's plan, you will never come into it. He said, to as far as you have seen, I've given to you. To as far as you have seen, you can take. He said, lift up your eyes, Abraham, see how far you can see it belongs to you. So, so it all depends, amen, on how you are able to build your spirit, your faith, your, 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 your spiritual sight, hallelujah, vision. It says, so we fix not our eyes on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporal. Temporal, amen, means that, amen, it, it walks through a, a, a span of time. It walks through, amen, a lapse of time. There is a there is there is there is a lapse of time. There is something that will happen that that thing, amen, will come to a point of call. The end is temporal. What is temporal cannot be permanent. What is temporal, hallelujah, cannot be treated as permanent. Listen to this. I say, what is temporal cannot be treated, amen, as permanent. What is temporal, amen, is transitional. You cannot build on the temporal. 
No matter what, nobody invest in, in, in people who are into business. They understand that if they're going to invest, they don't want to invest on something that is just now, you know, few, few weeks, few months. No, you want to invest on something, amen, that will give you, amen, a, a, you know, a long term, hallelujah, you know, a, a dividends. You don't want to invest on just something very short, something that today you got it, tomorrow you're not sure of it. Nobody invests in uncertainty. It's temporal. That's why, you see, the whole system of the world is collapsing because this, the value of the economic you know, philosophy, amen, is temporal. That's why when, when America sneezes, all right, the whole world catches cold, everything collapses. I mean, how do you define that? That, you know, the currency of one nation, all right, determines the economy of another country. You see, when you build life, you build yourself, you build your values, you build your world, amen, on the tempera, you never have, amen, a place of rest. You never have, amen, stability. You never come home. You never come to, amen, a place where you can build. That's why a lot of people, amen, you know, collapse. Marriages are collapsing because the values, amen, that defines their relationship is tempera. You, be, you build your relationship on beauty. I mean, beauty fades away, the Bible says. It fades away. You build, you build your, your values on money. Things can happen. Accident can happen that will take all that money that that person has. All right? and because when accident happens to somebody, whatever millions you have, you've got to, you've got to use that money amen, to, to try to you know, resolve the problem. If, if somebody has a broken leg now, you've got to take the money. You've got to fix the, whatever it is. You see? So there is nothing on earth that lasts. If you want to build a man lasting lasting life, you know, lasting legacy, you have to have a man a spiritual insight. It's from that dimension that we're able to make decision. All right? You cannot you cannot live your life wake up one morning like Esau and sell your birthright because you're hungry. You've got to learn sometimes, amen, to go to bed hungry, amen, to keep your values, to keep your integrity, to, to, to continue to look into that dimension, amen, that is eternal. If you build your life, amen, on the temporal, when the system collapses, you will collapse with them. That is why, have you seen how the whole world just went, hmm, everybody went down. It's like everything just, because somewhere, somewhere in, in Wahoom, all right, something went down, all right, and the world system are all connected together everything went down it's time we change amen, our, our concept our values of, 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 of existence you cannot build amen on the temporal you cannot build on that which is seen that which is seen speaks to how amen, everybody you know uh, 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 defines it accepts it you know is seen if I have to build my life on that which is seen, and then I have to play, amen, to the book. I have to follow what everybody's saying. I have to listen to what everybody's saying. Then I'll have to uh, also be pursuing, all right, what everybody's pursuing. You know, everybody, can you see the whole world? They're, everybody's faced on one direction. Everybody's seeking to one thing. No, if they're going this direction, you've got to understand that the Lord is leading you another direction. Because we are not tracking life, amen, based on that which is seen. We are living life based on the unseen. And we're saying the unseen, amen, as God's substance. The unseen is not just some figment of human imagination. The unseen is not just some realm somewhere in the sky. My God, the unseen defines that which you see. Because that which you see right now is temporal. That's what the scriptures say. It's going to, it's going to pass away. It will pass away. It's going to pass away. It's going to pass away. It has, that thing has no foundation. That thing has no stability. That thing has no, has no leg to stand upon. It will pass away. The Bible says this wall shall pass away. A new heaven and a new earth, hallelujah, is coming down. So fix our eyes. Not on what is seen, but that which is unseen. For what is seen is temporal. But what is unseen, listen to this. But what is unseen is eternal. <laughs> we, can, we can round up here this morning. But what is unseen is eternal. You by design, hallelujah, 
You by design is an eternal being because the one who breathed into you, breathed into you, the breath of life, eternal life was breathed into you. Bible says this is life eternal, uh -huh, that they may know you. So the more you get to seek to want to know that realm, that reality, amen, of a God that cannot be seen by human eyes. That's why people sit and they conclude. And they, and, they, and, they, and they make all sorts of decisions because they can't see God. They can't feel. They can't touch. You know, they, they, their entire life has been captured, amen, by the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is determined by what you see, by what you feel. You want to taste it, all right? They, they want to taste it before, before they know. They want to feel it. If you live your life, amen, via a dimension of an existence that has not, that has not armstrung the soul and brought the soul under the administration of the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, even as a believer, you will be living your life, amen, based on that which is good and evil. If it's good, oh, I love it. If, if it's if it contradicts, all right, you know, my, 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 my values, if it contradicts, all right, you know, my, my sense of what and my sense of belonging and my sense of identity, I fight it. See, that's the world system for you. That's what's going on in America. People can wake up one morning and decide to say, no, these ones are inferior. These ones are, you know, are, are, are better species that the color of skin can define and determine, all right, who, who, who gets to lead, who gets to be accepted, who gets to be rejected. These are, amen, a people, a world system, amen, that is dying, is, that thing is decaying, that system is decaying. So we have to begin to rise up and understand, amen, that God, the Father, is bringing us, amen, into a day where we can begin to express his image on earth, the image of the eternal. If we're going to do that, stop focusing, amen, on the scene. Stop, stop burying your life. Stop giving your time, hallelujah, to the scene, to that which is temporal. Stop committing, amen. Don't you understand your time, amen, is an investment into eternity. Don't you understand that how you spend your time? Remember, time is seen. Time can be measured by what you do. Time can be, can be valued, amen, by how you spend it. Just like money, amen. The value of money is what you use it for, amen. You can have billion dollars, amen, in an account, amen. It's just a billion dollars, amen. The worth of that money, amen, is what is able, amen, to buy. Is what you're able to do with it. That's the worth. That's the value of money. The value of money, amen, is not how strong it is. It's what you can buy with it. It's what you can do with it, all right. So that's how we, that's the same principle, amen, we use in money. Measuring time. If you want to measure time, all right. If you want to measure time, look at what time has been able to do in your life. You know, I was saying to my wife some some time ago. I said, you know, it's like I don't have you know twenty four hours is no longer enough for me. You know, yesterday I had to take off time because I needed to do some writing, and in fact, I, I got stuck on the on the introduction. I'm trying to put together, you know, these teachings that we've been doing on God's economy. I'm trying to bring out the material because people are asking. People are asking. You know, people from different part of the world they're asking. They say they want they want the note on this thing on this teaching. While some people are castigating and abusing me and you know and calling me names. You, on the other hand, you find people also asking. We want this material. So it all depends on where you're focusing is you get my point this is just by the way all right if you focus on those who are rejecting you are fighting you guess what you will you would deplete your energy you would deplete your strength amen and you will live your life in misery and in pain and god knows what amen but guess what on the other side i mean jesus went to a place they rejected him they in fact he drove him out of the place as he got into the boat on the other side there were people waiting for him that is, that is the world for you. If you fix your eyes on the scene, on what people are giving to you, on what people are saying about you, what you feel, you know, what, listen, you will never become productive. You cannot fix your eyes, amen, on, you know, as the more you rise up in life, the more you become somebody, the more God amen, increases you, the more enemy you're going to, you're going to have, and you have to develop the ability to know how to manage, amen, your, your enemies, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to, if you're going to be a church of the future, if you're going to be part, amen, of a people that are called church of the third day, if you're going to rise up in the power of the spirit and advance in the light of God and be, and be a voice to your generation, you must know, amen, how to accommodate. You must have a large heart.
Some time ago, the Lord said to me, I want you to rise up as a father. I hope you understand, being a father doesn't mean that all right, everybody becomes your son and daughter. No, that means that amen, you know how to express love, kindness, forgiveness, amen, and, 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 and mercy. You know how to extend that to people that don't even deserve it. Yes, you must. That's what the father is. You know, you know how many times your son offend you in a day. You know how many times your your son, amen, walk in, in disobedience in a day. But you cannot for every second, amen, hit the child because the child, amen, didn't listen to you. You have to, amen, speak. You have to, you know, uh, 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 you, you know, try to talk to the child. You there, there are so many, you know, uh, 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 things you, you you must do, all right, to try to gain that child. You know, that's that's the story of the prodigal son. We we must have a large heart and i'm realizing that that if i'm gonna be a voice to the nation then i must be ready amen to accept those who will reject me i must be ready amen to accept those who will throw stone at me amen like stephen i must have and all of those things must not distract me from the path from the assignment from the mandate amen of raising god a leader and i was fixing something yesterday in the house and my daughter asked me is it my dad my daughter said, are you a builder? I said, yes, I'm a builder. And she said, oh, I didn't know you're a builder. I said, well, I'm a builder. <laughs> so I said, but not in that kind of, you know, building that you think of. So while I was still trying to, you know, explain to her, then the brother said, yes, that is a builder. But you see, daddy, daddy, daddy builds people, you know, with God's word. I said, okay, here you go. Sam is answering, answering your question. So you say, no, no, daddy builds people. You know, daddy used the Bible, the word of God to build people. I said, that's it. That's what I do. You see, so if you're going to be a builder, you must be able to, you know, have a large heart to accommodate people, different kind of people, particularly people that are damaged. A lot of Christians out there today that are damaged, loafing around, all right, don't know what to do with their life because some prophets, pastor has abused them and cast them out so you're gonna and a lot of them are on facebook they're on social media what are you gonna do all right they, they, they're looking for the next place and the next point to vent their you know their anger and their hatred they're looking for the next person okay that they can just you know you know release the 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 the, the, the steam of their anger and hatred all right yes but they've got to learn to deal with these things and we have to you see we cannot be leaders of the future but listen this is not just something that you know i must learn you also must learn that because you're going to meet some of these people all right in your workplace in in, in a business you know a conference room somewhere you're going to meet them you, you know because people listen people carry all kinds of faces that we cannot see but we have to be able to discern these people you've got to be able to you know extend love amen to somebody who hates some somebody who dislikes somebody who who abuses you, you you must be able to see things from the vantage amen reality of that which is unseen the unseen when we live our life from the unseen we know things about people all right we know things that they, they don't want us to know amen when i look at some of these people i read their comments I can see into their life and that to me is a message I can see into their heart I can see what they're trying to cover you know I can see what you know I can see their fear but that's not the point that I'm making but this is important all right I mean this is just by the way but this is very very important so that's 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 uh, uh, um you know um second Corinthians 4 there's this scripture that we've been we've been looking into maybe I, I don't know if I should go into the scripture now look one but let, let me read this scripture, then I'll share with you, you know, the vision that I, I, the Lord showed me. Let, let's, let's look at Ephesians 1. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. Ephesians 1, I'm going to read from 16. I have not stopped praying for you. This is, this is Brother Paul speaking to the church of Ephesus, all right, which, of course, we know that, you know, uh, Timothy was the pastor of that church. And you know how Timothy died, all right? They killed, they killed Timothy. Timothy was the pastor of the church of Ephesus. The most, the most, the most, you know, if you will, the most advanced church in, in, in that, in that time, the most well-resourced church. When you talk about, when you talk about the things of the spirit, this is the place where Paul downloads so much of that, which heaven, all right, as, as deposited in his spirit, he deposited it in the church of Ephesus. The church of Ephesus was an epicenter, all right, in, in, in their day. And Timothy, a young, 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 all right, a, a guy. A young Greek who, who Paul raised up and, and built him up, all right, in the way of the Lord. 
Paul, Paul, Paul was the mentor of Timothy. And I mean, Paul did so much in the life of this young man. And Timothy, all right, didn't really want to take this position. Paul said, no, you are the one. No, I, I don't want you to look at your age. You are the one. You have the ability. You have what it takes, all right, you know, to, to, to raise. I mean, Ephesus. Ephesus was the epicenter, economic epicenter, was, was, the, was, the, was, was the melting point of, of ideologies and philosophy back in those days. Ephesus was like your, you know, your, your America, but you're talking about your New York, all right, I mean, that, everything happens around Ephesus. It's a place where political, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, ideas are forms and shape. It's a place of economic, you know, a uh, 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 collision. And all of these things that, you know, we read about, you know, the Asian war. Ephesus is a place where the temple, all right, the, that, that magnificent temple was built to Diana. Ephesus is a place where Paul fought beasts. These beasts are humans. <laughs> Ephesus. But Paul never pastored the church. This is the same idea we are trying to build because that's the, that's the pattern. I don't want to be a pastor, but guess what? We can raise people who can pastor others. We can raise people who can pastor cities, who, who can pastor communities. We can resource them. This, this is the pattern. This is the apostolic pattern. I don't, I, don't, I don't have to be a, a you know a, a, a sitting you know a, a resident pastor in a place but guess what we can resource people this is the pattern and this is the pattern that we're going to be seeing the last day that's why we're believing God that the Lord will open the, the city and the nations to us all right so we can begin to find people or amen whose whose life have become house of peace and from there we can begin to build and establish something amen that will transform the community and the society because God never move outside amen the have availability of humans somebody will have to say i avail myself then god still says, okay we can use you we can train you we can empower you all right but that's just by the way you know i i just felt i needed to you know bring that all right ephesus but here is something that paul was saying all right because you see i, I said i said some right, excuse me i made a statement some time ago about you know when you want to build a city church when you want to engage all right you know uh, uh the, the the spirit of a society you've got to understand amen the 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 the, the, the spiritual flavor of a, of a society amen to know the kind of church to build people have built the wrong church amen amen in in certain you know community because you see people don't have spiritual insight they don't have prophetic understanding of the nature of the environment so people just go around starting churches you can't just go around and when i say starting church that includes business all right because you cannot separate amen the the, the church amen from from what we call the economy of god remember the economy of god amen speak into god's prophetic program and intention all right for a people for a community for a society so building a church and building a business amen in 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 the eyes of god are two things because excuse me at the same thing because those two things are designed to advance anything we build anything amen we get get ourselves involved with amen or in must advance the purpose of god your work your business your career must be an extension of the kingdom of god hallelujah all right you can be a scientist amen in your in your laboratory whatever you're doing should should be advancing the purposes of god all right because guess what the people in the world they know that whatever they're doing is to advance amen the mandate the counsel of the past of darkness even though they won't tell you that when they're giving you, amen, evil, they, they mingle it with good. <laughs> so all you're seeing on the outside, amen, that's why they call it packaging. It's, it's branding, all right? In fact, that will lead me to the vision that I want to share with you. It's twofold, all right? They brand it. They cover it up. And so everything is looking nice. And then you just go and say, wow, this is good. Nah. Listen, you just bought into, amen, an investment that is going to be increasing the works of darkness. So we have to have that understanding that our business is an extension earlier of the economy of God. The Muslims, they understand that everything a Muslim man does, amen, is to advance Islam. That's just it. It's to advance Islam. And, they, and, and, they, and they're thriving. Guess what? They've almost taken Europe. Now they're battling for the soul of America. They've entered, you know, the educational system. And we're just there doing church, you know, hallelujah, clappy, clappy. We don't understand that there is a war. There is an undercurrent war taking place without raising a gun. 
You know, they understand, these guys, they understand that if they are going to take Europe and America, they can't be bombing everywhere, but they can, they can do that, amen, by invading the system, by invading the institution. So they're invading the politic system. They are invading. You see how they've invaded the political system in America? Yes, they're invading it. They'll take it, all right? You see those, those, those you know, Muslim ladies right now in, 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 in the Senate? Yes. You see, everything they, they, they stand for, all right, is to advance is, is Islam in, in America. They know what they're doing, you see? Uh, and, and people cannot see those things. So we, we have to understand. That's why we say we want Christians to go into politics, all right? Even if we, even we're not pursuing presidency, let's go into politics, amen, that defines, amen, those who make decisions for us in the parliament. We need Christians. That's why, once again, I want to encourage you, if you're in South Africa, you must vote for Christian Democratic Party. Don't go cast your vote for no other person because that man, amen, is there to advance. At least I have seen that. Maybe five, ten years ago, I didn't see it. But now I understand. And we have to encourage that. We have to push that, all right? All right, because we want somebody that will be there in the parliament. You see, the, the the smaller the number of Christians in the parliament, amen. The smaller the decision and the smaller the time. Have you noticed that? All right, if 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 you if you if you have more people in the parliament, they give you more time to speak. If you have few people in the parliament, guess what? They give you a few few minutes while you are still trying to give your introduction. They say time up, <laughs> time up. What do you do? So let's begin to amen, develop resources, amen, because this is our future and the future of our children. How did I even get to all this point? <laughs> but I, I hope somebody is listening to me this morning. I hope you get the heart amen, of, of what we're talking about. Okay, I was talking about Ephesus. Yes, Ephesus, politics and all of that. Yes, God is very strategic. Amen. All those, you know, seven churches of Asia, they play a, ma a major role, amen, in the takeover, amen, in the advancement of God's counsel within a region, all right? If I'm going to start a church in Santin, all right, I know the kind of a church I'm going to start. The church I'm going to start in Santin will be different from the church I will be starting, amen, in, uh, in, in Soweto, all right? It's the same apostolic, you know, a, a, a church, but different pattern and different concept of engagement, all right? Hey, if you want to start a church in a business hub, you've got to have amen, a business acumen. You've got to have insight, understanding amen, about how to do business in the marketplace. And you have to have a governmental authority that says occupy. You must know what you're occupying. All right? You must know where you want amen, the, the, your voice to be heard. You must know what is, is, is defined and determined as the visibility of God in the marketplace. All of these things we have to teach people apostolic pattern because listen to this as we say the days that are ahead of us are days of warfare but this warfare I, I may, might not even be things that you're gonna be seeing there'll be war going on amen in the in the boardroom war going on in the boardroom all right wars of ideas because there, there are two there are two ideas all right no matter your worldview there are two ideas there is a worldview amen that is from God and there is a worldview that is from the world system, and you can, that you can you can you can you know uh, separate into <clears throat> you know the Asian worldview, the you know the the the, the new age, and, and those that want to take over the world, you know the the globalist and all of that uh, and all kinds of all of that. No matter how complex those worldview is, they represent one thing: the plans of the devil. There is no good. There is no goodness in the world. And that is God's view. And the word of God must be understood from that perspective. So when you're reading the Bible, you're not just reading some old religious book. The word of God is the most current, amen, material in advancing, hallelujah, the, the program of God, the intentions of God in the earth. So how we read the word of God must change. Joseph showed us that. David showed us that. Esther showed us that. Hallelujah. Ruth showed us that. All of these great heroes that have gone ahead of us, they showed us. Paul showed us that. Jesus, our Lord, taught us that. Amen. He said, occupy till I come. Yeah. I was reading that word occupy yesterday. It was no, not yesterday. Three days ago, two days ago. And that word occupy. All right, connects to the same word that we've been looking into that speaks into amen, God's economy. That word occupy means to trade, to do, to, to trade, to, to, to remain a, a trader within the system. 
That word trading means, amen, to know how to manage, to know how to govern, to know how to, hallelujah, exchange, you know, things, ideas, and, 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 and resources, to know how to manage the things of God. Like we have said regarding, amen, uh, 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 the one that is defined, amen, as God's administrator. Jesus was faithful in his house, so was Moses. You, you cannot know how, you cannot trade in the world system amen, on behalf of God and not understand certain you know spiritual values and principles because everything that is happening around us amen is designed into one end hallelujah to bring God down or to establish the reign of Lucifer all right um let me finish this this thought then I'm, I'm gonna round up with the, with the vision so Paul said, I have not stopped praying for you, giving thanks, remembering you in my prayers, as the church of Ephesus, and asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, you see, you've got to, un I'm, okay, I share this because of the context of the nature of Ephesus. You see, when you read, when you read the book of Ephesians, I want you to have at the back of your mind, in fact, you need to take a travel. You need to go back and understand, amen, the layout, understand the environment, understand the culture, understand, amen, the influence, the position of Ephesus. Because the things that God speaks to us, amen, are always relevant to the environment, amen, he has positioned us or to the assignment he has committed into our hands. You see, when I read scripture, the things that I see, the things, amen, that I hear are totally different from what other people are hearing, all right? Because I am seeing, amen, when I read scripture, I am seeing taking nations. I'm seeing, amen, discipling nation. I'm seeing advancing the purposes of God. I'm seeing the kingdom of God coming. So in that if you will, frame of mind that heaven, amen, has given to me. Allow me to be able to see things in the word of God that ordinary person might not just see. Why? Because, you see, the, 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 the spiritual environment that you create or that has been given to you and you have accepted, amen, would define the kind of understanding that you're going to get in the word of God. I hope that is very clear. So Paul said, I am asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give to you a spirit. Some translations say, the spirit but this one says, may give to you a spirit of wisdom so we know that wisdom is a spirit and revelation all right the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge in the knowledge of him the knowledge of god the knowledge of christ amen is a major key to spiritual breakthrough and of course amen to governing the earth the knowledge the knowledge the knowledge of god is not something you get because you went to university the knowledge of God, getting to know God, his ways, amen, getting to know his heart, his mind, amen, cannot be done via the power, amen, of in inte intellect. No, as much as intellect is important, we need intellect because God gave us intellect. But I'm saying to access God and the things of God cannot be done, amen, through intellect. Intellect, amen, must advance the purposes of God. But intellect, amen, cannot connect you to God. The spirit must connect you to God and your intellect, your intelligence must advance that which you know of God. I hope that is clear. All right. It's a may give to you because we're looking at the resource that allow us to become a resource in the earth. He said that I'm praying that the, that the Father, that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give to you the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit. If it's a Spirit, you can't touch it. If it's a Spirit, amen, you can't smell it. If it's a Spirit, amen, it's not seen. If it's a Spirit, it lives in the unseen realm, but it's real, amen. In the unseen realm, there are realities like what we say. In the unseen realm, amen, there is in the, the unseen realm is a world, a world of reality, a world of tangibility. A world where you can taste. A world where amen, there are emotions, there are feelings there. Oh, man. In the spirit world, hallelujah, there, 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 are, there, are, there are material. In fact, everything you see in the natural realm came from the... Remember God said, let there be light and there was light and every other thing came out of that. Amen. We live amen, in the product of light. Alright? So it says that he may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In your knowledge of him. He said, I'm asking that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know him and the hope of his calling, the riches of his glory and his inheritance. But that's not where I'm going. Okay, I've laid all this down basically to share this you know, vision with us. And I hope that this, this vision will help us to kind of understand what the Spirit of God is saying and emphasizing. All right, when we began to 
looked into the whole concept of God leading us into a new day, we began to track Noah. Noah was a major uh, 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 icon that we were looking into. Why? Because the Bible says, as it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. That's what this, the scripture says. So, early hours uh, uh, today, the, like I said, the vision is, is twofold. But the second fold speaks to me more of where we are, what the Spirit of God is doing. And I'm sure you will agree with me as I share this vision. Hopefully in the next 10 minutes, there about should be done. Now, I, I, was in, in, I was in a place, I guess with some people, I, I, I'm not sure what we're doing there. But there was a lot of, you know, uh, uh, arguments, a lot of, you know, uh, um, trying to, debate certain things I, i'm not sure what we're trying to debate but then the scene also changed i saw myself it, 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 um, almost like in a in a studio in a, you know a tv you know station studio and this person was trying to manipulate uh, what was that is that the word yes was trying to uh, this this person i want to believe maybe is the editor I, I don't know but he's saying to this other person this preacher there's a preacher preaching and he said i don't like the way this person is you know you know uh, saying this word and I, I don't like the sitting so from his position he's trying to control he's like he can put his hand into the tv and and really control you know uh, uh, everything and, I, and i'm wondering i'm like is this possible and you know it's like this man that is that is preaching or talking almost like became small and he's trying to control and trying to manipulate that person and i'm like this is not right this is you can't do this all right and then the scene changed i, I think that about three four scene, you know how some of this you know the, that vision or dreams you know are you know you, you get different scenes and sometimes you know you ask yourself is there a correlation of course they all correlate they all connect but it's important that we understand what the Lord is saying. Then I was in my home. It's like we had some guests and they came with their, you know, with, with some children. And they were watching TV with my children and every other, you know, and this. In fact, I think if I'm not mistaken, well, let, let me just leave it at their guests. They came, you know, and they came with their children and they were all watching TV. And while they were watching TV, there was this advert of, you know, one of these uh, 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 spirit uh, alcohol. I'm not sure if it's Jean or I don't know which of them. But you know how they make this, you know, uh, advert. They look very catchy and they look very, you know, the quality is, I mean, it's out of this world. And as the you know the the the, the gene or the, the the alcohol was being poured into the glass, this this teenage boy, I'm sure he should be in his ten or twelve, and he began to you know draw the attention of all the children and said, you know, if he grows up, this is what he wants to do and all of that, and it was almost like trying to influence the children in the house that you know he, he's gonna he, he's gonna drink and he's gonna you know produce. So I tried, of course, I immediately, I tried, I, I put the TV on the pause and I tried to, you know, bring that boy to correction and say, no, no, you don't want to emulate this. This is not what you want to be in the, in the future and things like that. And I was, you know, just talking while I'm not sure if, if, if this, if this boy, if the people that came, the people that this guy came with, I spirit, I'm not sure. But this other lady that I know just sat down, was watching almost like it was a normal thing. That was, that was the idea that I got that, I mean, why, why, are you, why are you, you know, trying to correct the guy? This is what he wants to be. And, and I was trying to say, in my house, no, you, you're in my house. This, we've got a standard in my house. There are certain things that we don't watch in my house and we don't allow. And beyond that, I mean, I mean you're going to grow up one day. You're going to have the wrong value. So that was my take. And I was trying to correct. But of course, I was doing that in love. wasn't, you know, screaming. I was just trying to show the boy that you don't want to become this in the future. Then suddenly, it's like the heavens open up. It's like the heavens just open up and we were outside and um, I saw this bird 
you know, coming with, you know, flapping his wings, massive wings, massive wings, just flapping the wings and flying down with few other birds following, you know, following this bird. But this bird was massive, you know, you, one of those birds you, you see, you know, in the sky and you just see the, the grandeur, you see the elegance of this bird coming with wings. And we're all looking and trying to, you know, picture what, what bird is this? And so everybody's trying to give, you know, nobody said an eagle, but my son said, this is a falcon. I said, wow, a falcon, wow. But the, the, the wings were so large and, you know, and, and, and wide. And this bird was just, and everything is in black and white, black and white. So as we, we continue to watch, suddenly, I saw other animals. I saw giraffe. I saw, uh, um, what do you call it now? I know I saw a giraffe, but I saw, I saw an elephant. I saw other animals. They were all, you know, not flying now. Of course, they, they didn't have wings, but they were galloping on the cloud. You know, you could see them galloping. And they, they were galloping in such joy and elegance and just coming. And they were all following this bird. This is like this bird was leading them. And um, I was just there astounding, looking at like, God, what is this? And I'm calling the people. I said, do you guys see? They said, yeah, we see, we see, we see the birds. We see the animals. And the, the moment, you know, I, I, I drew the attention of, you know, um, the family to what we're seeing. And the word Noah came to my spirit. Noah. Noah. I'm like, Noah. You mean, oh, are this the bird? Are this the, you know, animals that came from, the, that came out from the, you know, uh, from the ark of Noah? Wow. But you could see them tall, you know, massive, huge, but they were galloping on, on the cloud. Effortless, effortless, effortless. And everybody was getting excited. Suddenly I said to myself, I want to see where this, you know, uh, this bird is leading them. I see, I me, mean, I can, I can chase them. So I just said, I need to see where this bird is leading this, you know, these creatures. But you could see that they were quite high in the sky. Suddenly it's like I saw a, sh a shooting star, you know, almost like, uh, you know, uh, um, a comet just went down and all, the bird just also followed that comet and all the animals, you know, just flew down. And I, you know, ran, of course, I couldn't catch up with them, but I saw that they actually landed on the, on the, you know, on the, on the ground. And I was so amazed and I was saying to the Lord, Lord, what is this? And the word came as it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the son of man. But here is the take. Here is the take. The spirit of the Lord said to me, do not get yourself distracted by the things on the ground. Watch that which is coming down. And this is the point that I want to bring across to us this morning. There are things the Lord is releasing from the ark. The ark is no longer a physical thing. The ark has become a dwelling place of God in our life. Now releasing, it, releasing us into the earth again. And to me, these animals, they represent, amen, the restart, the recreation, the, the rebirth, amen, of a new world, of a new life, of a new, I mean, when I talk about a new world, that is not some new age statement. This is, this is God says, I will, I'm going to do a new thing. Remember God said, you know, to Noah, take each of the animal two by two and put them in the ark. In fact, this morning, I, when I, when I woke up, I had to, you know, you know, check Google and ask some questions. What's the size of Noah's Ark? You know, they said is I think some, some some people say it's you know 500, 500 feet long. They said is 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 a football a football a field one football field, amen, and half size of a football field put together. That's the length. And the first thing that came to my spirit is. How did Noah build this thing? And what kind of resource? Where did Noah get the resource? Somebody said, well, well, he just got the resource. But how did Noah, you know, get the resource to build? Yes, God gave him an idea. God gave him what to build. But God also gave him 
the resource, if you will, the money to build it, the finance, if you needed finance, if you needed money. So what I'm saying is, the Lord is speaking to us as, as it were in the days of Noah. So whatever God is giving to us, whatever God, amen, is, is putting in our hand, be it a talent, be it a gift, be it, you know, you know, an ability, let it be that to which, amen, can build that to which God desire to want to see on earth. This is the point that I want to make. But the, the, the main point is don't fix your eyes on earthly things and don't get yourself too carried away Amen. By arguments and things that may just distract you. And because that is the first thing I saw, all right, that there's a distraction going on in the world. Why things are happening, why there is a deploying, why there is a coming down. I mean, you must see this bird. This bird looks gorgeous, gigantic, massive, elegant, flying without any, any sense of effort or strength just flapping the wings and i was just like wow and you see other small birds and the more i looked at that and, and then you just see other animals and like i said they're all in black and white black and white i don't know what that mean but they were all not in color we were all in black and white and to me this was just amazing so we need to understand what the Spirit of God is saying and doing. If there's anything, the spiritual realm is coming into the human realm. There's a release, that is a, there's a bringing forth, there is a coming out. Can we see it? Are we seeing it? Are we feeling? Are we, are we being connected? Are we connecting ourselves? Listen, friends, all of these things that we're doing, money, devotion, prayer, all of this, it's never a waste of time. You're not wasting your time. Something is happening within your spiritual life. Something is being shaped. Something is being renewed, reformed. You, you are becoming a different man. The scripture says, amen, that the more we look into the perfect law of liberty, amen, and not being a forgetful hearer, we will be changed and be transformed. The more we look into the word of God, we are being changed. You may just be, of course, the same person that, you know, goes to your workplace every day. But something on the inside of you. I mean, I know, personally, I know that I'm changing. I just know it. Not like there's anything physical in my body that's changing. But something on the inside of me has shifted. And that's not just some buzzword. I have shifted. There's the spiritual growth in my life. I know it. I know where I was. Amen. You know, I, I, I've, last year I know where I was spiritually. You must know where you are spiritually. I know where I am. I know the the the, the way the Lord, Amen, is speaking and the things, and and I know how I'm able to connect to spiritual things and understand. But beyond that, there's a sense of rest, of 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 peace in my in my in my in my in my life. I'm not moved by anything. I'm not moved by contradictions and, and need and lack. God is like, is like God is remembering, rem, rem, remembering one. I mean, I got a shock of my life. I was here, it was two days ago. Two days ago, I was in my office just doing my, doing my work. And I, I, I'm not sure if it was around 3, 3 in the afternoon. Of course, my wife, my wife works from home. Just, uh, uh, you know, one or two days she goes to office then come so my wife came she knocks and said oh somebody's here to see is to see you said, somebody's here to see me somebody actually brought money to you know to to you know to bless you know to bless us i'm like wow. okay so i went out and yes this lady i've never had any physical contact with, with this lady she said you know she heard last 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 week you know that you know men of god needs to be needs to be reached out to you know people we need needs to be reached out to so she she she, she said you know i came to her spirit i don't know this lady that's the truth she said she, the lord dropped in her heart to bring 500 to the house so she came to fulfill that which the lord you know put in her spirit and i'm like lord jesus I understand that this is not just about money. It is God remembering you. 
God will remember you in little things, but you have to see the bigger picture. And of course, I poured out my heart to this lady and her home, her family, and just be a blessing to her. But that's to tell you that, amen, that God knows where you are. He knows your, he knows your address. And if you need anything, I'm telling you, he will steer the heart of somebody to show you care, to show you love. If it's not happening, you're not forgotten. So to me, that was, that was an encouragement. And I prayed for this lady and just released grace of God upon her life and her household. And she drove away. But guess what? That's God. So what I'm saying is God is doing something nowadays. The favor of God is being opened, amen, to us in this brand new day. Things are happening that we will not be able to comprehend or understand. Let's take our eyes off that which is seen. Let's begin to connect to the unseen realm because things are happening in the unseen realm. All right. God is deploying, amen, his spirit. God is deploying our layer things, resource. I mean, these animals were all just galloping and coming down. And I'm looking at, I, was, I remember I was focused on, you know, this uh, giraffe, the way the giraffe is, you know, just galloping with those long legs. You know, I'm like, Lord, wow, this is amazing. Here we are. Like I said, I'm not one that always get a vision. But when God gives me a vision, I know God is speaking expressly. And God it may be speaking to you today, my friends watching me. Maybe this is the time for you to shift from being distracted, from being lured, from being carried away. This is the time to focus on the Lord, to focus on his mind, to focus on his ways, to focus on his intention for your life. That as you go out this morning, let that which amen, define your day be that which heaven has programmed and ordained for you today. Bind your mind, your heart to the will of God. Lose every connection with the flesh. Yes. By now, I'm sure you understand when, what we mean when we say bind. All right. That word bind, amen, is a positive, is a positive word we use in prayer. All right. In the, in, in the, in the religious, you know, uh, uh, house, uh, they, they bind the devil. We don't bind devil. We bind ourselves, amen, to, to the things of God. Because that word bind, amen, is the same word that is used for marriage. Is the same word that is used that a, a man, a man, will leave his, his father's house and be cleave. That word bind means to cleave to something. All right? It's the devil that wants to bind himself to us. We want to lose the devil. We want to lose his activity. So when you lose something, all right, you 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 you, you destroy his connection. All right, you disconnect. When you lose something, you, you don't lose that. You, you don't lose you know yourself from God. You bind yourself to God. When you when you lose something, all right, you make that thing all right unfirm, or, you know, unconnected. You disconnect yourself from that thing. All right. So we bind ourselves to the will of God. You can check this word out. We've said this several times. You can find that in my book on prayer. All right. We bind ourselves to God's heart, to God's mind. And try it. Wake up in the morning. I do it every time. Lord, I bind my mind, my thoughts, my, my desire this day to your will, to your staying power. I proclaim this day, my soul, my mind is married to your will. I stay in the path, yes, of righteousness. I'm connected. Yes, the same word, bind, means to be connected. Means to stay. I stay there. And I lose the activity of the enemy over my life. Yes, if they are connected, wherever they are, I lose them. Yes, when you lose them, amen, they become, you know, losing. They, they have no more power. They have no binding power. They have no staying power. And you proclaim and declare this day you move on. You advance into the will of God. So this is my prayer for you this morning. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will grant to you the spirit of wisdom. Yes. And revelation in the knowledge of him. That this day you will be filled. Yes. With the new reality of that which the spirit of God is doing in the earth. That you will not be captured and be imprisoned by that which is seen. But that your spirit will begin to see the unseen realm. That you will begin to enter into that which is called the new 
new day that your heart your mind will begin to yes connect with that which the spirit of god is proclaiming for this brand new day oh that there will be a passion and a longing a desire for god more than anything yes that this day yes becomes a day where the portal are open to you that you will enter in they are inviting you to come you will enter in you will hear the voice of god you will hear the mind of god you will see yes from the ascended realm you will partake yes of the goodness of god in the land of the living i proclaim upon you this day that as you go out you will walk yes in divine favor you will walk in divine wisdom you will walk in divine knowledge understanding you will walk yes in the power of the spirit you will submit yes to that which the spirit of god is saying the scripture says let those who have the ears to hear hear what the spirit of god is saying you will hear what god is saying you will apply that which is saying and you will eat the fruit of that which the spirit have said i declare this day you will abide in him as his word abide in you for you can do nothing without abiding in him as you abide in him let him continue to trim you let him continue to walk on every dimension of your existence so you can bear forth more fruit in the name of Jesus I declare this morning that you will prosper you are healed you are restored you are revived you are equipped I declare in the name of Jesus that you will walk yes in the fear of God like Noah walk yes and they build that which yes was not known or seen or understood for his day grace is given to you in the name of Jesus resource to become a vessel yes in the hand of God let this day be the day where you enter into newness. Father, we pray this day for the things that are yet unseen. We refuse to allow our present pain, need, fear, limitation, doubt, insecurity to stop us. We enter into what your spirit has desired and ordained for this brand new day. We receive life we receive light. We receive grace. We receive truth. We are healed. We are hopeful. We are energized. We are resourced. We are blessed. We thank you that we are indeed a blessing to our nation, to our city, to our community, to our family, to our loved ones. Your goodness like a river will flow out of our life in this brand new day. We thank you, Father. For a wonderful, glorious, prosperous day. Use us for your glory. May we become that ecclesia. Yes, that carry forth, that brings forth your intention. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you everyone this morning for joining, for connecting with us. May your day be filled with joy, peace, prosperity. May you go out there and continue to be a blessing to your world. May people, amen, who come around you, may they feel the presence of God. May they feel the impact, yes, of God's goodness. God bless you. Thank you everyone for connecting this morning. Have yourself a wonderful day. God bless you. Bye-bye.